I think in those early years, you look at my earrings and they're like as big as big as uh, envelopes, and um, like like crystal balls are on your ears. And I would just, I would just, I would have toned it down a little bit. Well, I can tell you I had to fight to wear that dress that short that day. I remember that because my father was like, going out here in these short dresses, what you doing? What you trying to prove? So I had to fight to wear that little plaid jumper. I love jumpers. And to this day, a white shirt is my favorite thing to wear with anything. So I considered myself pretty fashionable then, although looking back on it, I mean, it's very schoolgirl fashionable, isn't, wouldn't you say? WJZ, this was my photograph for Nashville for the standard promo thing. Like that. And I remember doing a wash and set on my hair, drove a Chevy Chevette because that's what I could afford because I hate bills. I always hated bills, always lived beneath my means. I remember I didn't have air conditioning, so I would roll the windows down, all the windows down on the way to work and let that be the dryer for my hair. So I would, and then I'd take the rollers out on the way to work. First day of the National Oprah Winfrey Show. It was a big moment and trying to, there, there was a local designer trying to figure out what would fit, what would look good on my body, what would not be something that would be uncomfortable, what would be, it was, uh, a lot of thought went into the earrings, which now I think are big as envelopes. <laughs> there, I had a hair person, Andre Walker, and I had um, uh, Roosevelt Cartwright was the makeup artist that day, and that that was it. There was not obviously no one dressing me at that. Obviously, nobody was dressing me but myself. Okay. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is why favorite things started in the first place. I love these pajamas so much. Someone had given them to me and I then gave them to everybody I knew and I ran out of people to give them to. And then somebody said, why don't you just do a show about it? Why don't you just give them to people, just and tell other people? I said, how are we gonna do that? And they said, if we can get the audience here and we can get enough pajamas for everybody in the audience, you can give out the Uggs and you can give out the pajamas and you can call it your favorite things. And that's how it started. My favorite thing to wear still to this day is pajamas. And my way of dressing is comfort first. And uh, I like anything that feels like a pajama <laughs> and looks like a pajama. So these were like flannel, comfortable, made me think about sitting in a corner with a fire and reading, even though I didn't have a fireplace in, in, um, in my home in Chicago in the apartment, but I did have a farm in Indiana. And when people would come, I would have pajamas for them to, to wear. When you come to my house, I would have pajamas of all sizes so that you could just like cozy up. So I'm a pajama girl for sure. And there it is, the Celine suit. I wanted to wear that red suit and Gail, who came there that day because the whole give away the car idea was Gail's idea. And she was like, you shouldn't wear that red suit. I just think it's just too, oh no, I think it's, mm -mm, I don't like it. And I was like, I'm gonna wear the red suit because the red suit matches the red bows. And that was the best decision, that red suit. It has carried us through a couple of decades now. This dress was all about the pink diamonds. So these were real pink diamonds, real pink diamonds that I sold and then gave all the money to charity. Uh, I, for a long time, was looking for pink diamonds because I heard that the pink diamonds were the ultimate diamonds. And so these were real pink diamonds. And then the pink diamonds went up in value, went, were so, became so valuable that I no longer wanted to wear them because I felt like if something, if I lost one or something happened to it, then what? And it was also more valuable to, to me to know that I could have them if I wanted to, but I sold them and gave all the money to charity. I just wore it because it's long and it was flowy and I liked it. It's incredible that these young girls whom I saw something in themselves that they, they did not see or feel or know at the time are now out in the world, making their way in the world. It's the greatest reward. It is just one of the greatest rewards of my life. Oh, this was fantastic. 
This was Oscar de la Renta with Oscar de la Renta. Ah! Oscar de la Renta with Oscar de la Renta. That, this was 2010. I don't know why I was made the host, but um, I have to say that not the pressure that it is now. I don't think I would ever go. I couldn't go. I could, it is just too much pressure. This was just fun. This was fun because Oscar de la Renta was one of my favorite designers. And I just thought he always so understood the woman's body and did the most feminine, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful gowns. And had I ever gotten married, actually went through with the wedding, I always wanted an Oscar de la Renta gown. So it was just a, a joy to be able to be in his presence and to have him design this dress just for me, and it was fun. We looked at lots of different things, and I wanted to go for something that was as slimming as possible, and that was, you know, I knew I was gonna, I wanted to wear my hair up. This was, I was going through my ponytail phase. So I wanted something that would make me look as lean as possible along with, along with the ponytail. Um, I just loved this night so much. I just loved everything that happened because this show at the um, United Center in Chicago was the only show that I did not have a pre-show meeting about and the only show that I ever allowed my producers to do something and surprise me. So I didn't know anything that was happening that night. I just walked into the stadium and everything that showed up Tom Hanks and Jamie Foxx and Beyonce and Aretha Franklin and all that. I didn't know any of that was going on. And so the whole entire evening was a surprise to me. And the reason why that was the only time that happened is because once before, in the early 90s, I think, we they surprised me with Mary Tyler Moore. And I went into the ugly cry. And I said, nobody will ever surprise me again if you want to continue to work here. Do not surprise me. And so they actually came to me and said, can we please surprise you on this night? And I, I, let, go, I let go on that night. Well, my favorite part of the look is the hat, man, because I, 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 used, to, I used to have, when I first moved to Montecito, I had an entire hat room. I later remodeled the house and, you know, just expanded the closet, but I had a whole entire room where you step up and there'd be like walls and walls and walls of hats. I grew up with hat wearing, church going women, and my mother was a big hat wearer. And so I always loved, you know, a beautiful, beautifully designed hat. This was not coordinated at all because I'm wearing pink and she's wearing black. So I have no idea. I have no idea to know what, the, what she was gonna be wearing. For a huge interview like that, I just wanted to be comfortable. That's why I'm wearing flat boots. And I knew we were gonna be outside and I knew that at any time in Santa Barbara, the weather can change, you know, it can get misty or, or it could cool. And this, it did, this was a three hour interview that was cut down. And so I didn't, um, I, di I, I didn't, I, first of all, I wanted to be comfortable. I didn't want to worry about, am I pulling the skirt down? Is the skirt up? What is showing, what is not? and I just wanted to feel like myself. And so I am most like myself in a sweater and slacks or a loose skirt or a shirt and a shirt and a V-neck sweater. And you know, one of my fa favorite designers now that I wear just like geranimals is, is Bruno uh, Cuccinelli. Um, so this, this is the Bruno uh, Cuccinelli boots and the skirts, but always about comfort for me. For a long time, people thought it was my favorite color. It, it's never been my favorite color. It just has been such a, an iconic um, staple in my life as the color purple. And so when I was doing the Oprah show, I wore a lot of it. And I wore a lot of color, if you look, at, look back at those tapes, because TV, you need color. And when I finished the show, I literally rid my closet of color. And so now, you, when you see me, for the most part, I am in neutrals. You, you don't, I don't, I'm not out wearing a lot of color. For 25 years, I had to wear color. I was wearing color, 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 color. And I just, I just got kind of tired of it. And for this season, I decided to celebrate the color purple and all that it's meant in my life. I wanted to purple it up. I'm gonna purple up and purple down. So I'm telling you, you come to my house now, I got purple sweats, 
and I got purple pajamas, and I got, I got purple everything. So I'm doing for the purple what Barbie did for the pink, okay? Okay. <laughs>